According to the latest reports, SpaceX is presently awaiting the FAA launch license to announce the Starship orbital test flight launch date. At the Satellite 2023 conference program in Washington, D.C., SpaceX VP of Commercial Sales, Tom Machinero, stated that the company is on the verge of the launch attempt and is waiting for the launch license from the FAA, which will be granted shortly. Elon Musk tweeted on March 16 confirming the report, saying that SpaceX is ready to launch Starship in a few weeks and the launch timing depends on FAA license approval. He added that the launch attempt will be in the third week of April. Preparations for the test flight are still underway at Starbase. SpaceX is constructing a water deluge system at Starbase to protect the launch pad from the extreme acoustic and thermal environment during tests and launches. Several pieces of deluge system hardware have been delivered to Starbase recently, including the plates through which water will be sprayed below the orbital launch mount. An edited image posted on Twitter by RGV Aerial Photography shows how the deluge system will potentially look once the plates are installed. Water will be sprayed under the launch mount through the holes on the plate. The installation of shields on the orbital launch mount is still ongoing. The shields protect all exposed piping, manifolds, control panels, and other components from engine exhaust and debris during liftoff. After removing Booster 7 from the launch mount on March 10, teams began welding on the interior of the launch mount. They removed the 20 super heavy booster hold down clamps from the launch mount before the welding work began. Those clamps were reinstalled on the launch mount on March 14, signaling the end of welding work surrounding the clamp region. The work on welding the shields to the launch mount is still to be completed. Installing the deluge system and completing the remaining works on the launch mount will take a few weeks, so even if the launch license is received in the coming days, the launch will occur only in mid-April as Musk mentioned. Furthermore, Musk said on March 7 during a speech at the Morgan Stanley conference that there is a likelihood of over 50% that Starship would enter orbit on its first try and an 80% chance that it will do so this year. However, he added that it might take a couple more years to achieve full and rapid reusability with Starship. This is for our first orbital attempt of, of Starship. Um, hopefully in the next month or so, we'll, we'll have our first attempt. I'm not saying it'll get to orbit, but I am guaranteeing excitement. We're building a, a whole series of Starships in, in South Texas. Um, and so I think we've got, I don't know, hopefully about an 80% chance of reaching orbit this year. It'll probably take us a couple more years to achieve uh, full and rapid reusability, um, which I can't, I can't emphasize enough is it is, the, it is the profound breakthrough that is needed to extend life beyond Earth. Teams have recently installed the remaining thermal protection system tiles on the nose cone of Starship 24 at the Rocket Garden. The ship will be rolled out to the launch site once the site is ready for a full stack ahead of the test flight. Raptor engines continue to be moved into the Mega Bay for installation into Super Heavy Booster 9. As of March 16, nearly 25 of the 33 booster engines had already been moved into the Mega Bay. The booster has already successfully completed three cryogenic proof tests, and once all 33 engines are installed, SpaceX will begin Booster 9's static fire test campaign. Teams were spotted working on the exterior of Starship 26 lately. The ship was moved into the high bay on Wednesday, March 15. Ship 26 has already successfully completed two cryogenic proof tests, and once all six engines are installed, SpaceX will begin Ship 26's static fire tests. Starship 28's nose cone payload bay stack was installed on top of the forward dome section on Wednesday morning. The ship's primary structure will be complete once the tank section is stacked and flaps are installed. Now, let's discuss some of the biggest updates in the world of science and technology from the past week. Axiom Space, a Houston-based company, unveiled the latest spacesuit that NASA's Artemis III astronauts will wear during their lunar surface operations. The current design of NASA's spacesuit has remained relatively unchanged for the past four decades, having been used since the Space Shuttle era. While the old suit design has proven itself over time, it is particularly limiting in terms of the range of movement it allows. For astronauts to walk, bend, and crouch comfortably in a low-gravity environment like the Moon, a new suit was needed. In 2022, NASA awarded Axiom a $228 million task order under a $1.26 billion contract to build the agency's next-generation spacesuits to support the Artemis missions. Dubbed the Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit, the new spacesuit offers improved flexibility, dust resistance, insulation, and radiation shielding. It features additional joints, particularly in the lower half, enabling a greater range of movements. This will make it easier for astronauts to walk and pick up things from the ground while on the moon. The new helmet has improved features, such as a light band over the helmet to enable better vision, and an HD video camera on the side. 
the light mount is mounted to the visor assembly into the helmet bubble. Uh, and this, this essentially gives the astronauts lights to see where they're in shaded portions of the moon or if they're in low Earth orbit in a night pass, they can turn on these lights to see um, using tools or translating on the space station or anything like that. We also have on the side here, we have a HD video camera. So those of us back on Spaceship Earth watching the EVA uh, will be able to watch it in high definition, which will be a fantastic upgrade, I think, from, <clears throat> from current day technology. The well-insulated boots will allow astronauts to work in the cold conditions of the moon's permanently shadowed regions. The spacesuits that NASA astronauts will wear on the lunar surface will have a white outer layer to reflect heat, protecting the wearer from extremely high temperatures when in sunlight. To conceal the suit's proprietary elements, the prototype unveiled on March 15 was adorned with Axiom's logo and featured the company's brand colors of blue, black, and orange. The moon suit will mostly be white, so we'll replace all the black with white, and that's really for thermal reasons, so didn't want anybody to, to get that mixed up. Um, but other than that, I think this is just a fantastic, fantastic looking suit. The innovative technologies incorporated into the new spacesuit will enable the exploration of more of the lunar surface than ever before. SpaceX's 27th Commercial Resupply Services mission for NASA successfully docked at the International Space Station on Thursday, March 16. The mission, dubbed CRS-27, was launched from Launch Complex 39A at NASA's Kennedy Space Center on March 14, sending a robotic cargo Dragon capsule carrying 2,852 kilograms of supplies, hardware, and experiments to the space station. Among the experiments are investigations to examine whether clinically approved drugs and new therapies can counteract changes in heart cells and tissues induced by the microgravity environment of space flight. The experiments also include one from NASA's Ames Research Center that will examine new technology to improve systems that remove carbon dioxide from the air inside the space station. The European Space Agency's biofilms experiment will evaluate the formation of bacterial biofilms in space, which can create cleaning-resistant slimy material that damages equipment and can cause infections. Additionally, a Japanese experiment will expose bacteria and moss spores to the harsh space environment using a bracket attached outside the ISS. Another notable payload on the flight is a ball clamp monopod, manufactured by students, which is a platform to keep cameras stable while tracking targets on the ground or taking images and video inside the space station. The CRS-27 mission also included a half-ton payload package for the U.S. military, worth $35 million, with experiments ranging from in-space laser power beaming to weather monitoring. In the coming days, the Canadian-built robotic arm will reach inside the trunk of the Dragon spacecraft to grab the military package and attach it to a port outside the Japanese Kaibo Laboratory module. Please check out the link in the description to learn more about all the research and scientific experiments the CRS-27 Dragon spacecraft carried to the ISS. The spacecraft separated from the upper stage of the Falcon 9 rocket 12 minutes after launch on Tuesday and began a 36-hour transit to the International Space Station. On March 16, at 11.31 a.m. UTC, the spacecraft successfully arrived at the station and docked at a port on the Harmony module, which had been recently vacated by SpaceX Crew-5 Dragon Endurance. CRS-27 will remain at the station for around a month before returning to Earth with experiment results, samples, and other cargo. Relativity Space was forced to scrub the launch of its Terran-1 rocket on March 11, following two last-minute aborts due to technical issues. The first attempt was aborted at T-0.5 seconds at 2.42 p.m. Eastern Time during a three-hour launch window. The rocket's nine first stage engines had already ignited when the abort was called. According to Relativity, the abort was due to a corner case in the stage separation automation a few seconds before the scheduled liftoff. The company recycled for a second attempt at 4 p.m. Eastern, but the countdown halted at around T-45 seconds, scrubbing the launch for the day. The company later said the abort was caused by low fuel pressure in the rocket's upper stage. The March 11 scrub came after propellant temperature issues postponed an initial launch attempt on March 8. During the March 11 webcast, the company said that a faulty ground valve caused the problem during the March 8 attempt. During Wednesday's operations, a ground equipment valve was malfunctioning. This prevented us from having adequate control over achieving the cold temperatures we aim for with our liquid oxygen. The team has since fixed this valve and incorporated additional mitigations to get that liquid oxygen or LOX to remain at acceptable temperatures. Relativity plans to try again for the Good Luck Have Fun mission on Thursday, March 23rd. The mission is a technology demonstration with no functional satellites on board. Please watch my previous video to learn more about the Terran-1 rocket and its inaugural mission. Link in the description.
The Rocket Lab Electron rocket lifted off from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia on March 16, kicking off a mission dubbed Stronger Together. It was the company's second consecutive mission from the U.S. soil. Stage separation took place nearly two and a half minutes after liftoff, followed by the ignition of the upper stage vacuum optimized Rutherford engine. Rocket Lab has been working to make the Electron's first stage reusable by recovering the boosters after the ocean splashdown, but there was no such recovery attempt on Thursday's mission. Just under an hour after liftoff, the rocket's upper kick stage deployed two radar imaging satellites for San Francisco-based company Capella Space into a 600 km circular orbit. The two new satellites, each roughly 100 kg, are joining Capella Space's synthetic aperture radar constellation, which provides customers with detailed imagery of Earth both day and night, in all weather conditions. Rocket Lab has now launched 34 orbital missions with the two-stage Electron rocket to date. The next Electron mission, dubbed the Beat Goes On, is currently set to launch later this month, with two Earth imaging satellites for Black Sky. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, so you never miss an episode.